Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and I am back again with one of these mastery test answer keys, and I will work through these problems one by one, and hopefully they will help you understand the material. But the first one I have here, it says we have a powerful missile, reaches a speed of five kilometers per second in 10 seconds after it launches. What is the average acceleration of the missile during this period? Well, it initially starts off at zero and it reaches a speed of five kilometers per second in 10 seconds, okay? What is the average acceleration? Let me switch the cameras off here, stop sharing. All right, so this is the information we have. Its initial velocity is zero. 10 seconds later, it reaches five kilometers per second, okay? And last time we talked about average velocity Average velocity is the change in displacement over time. And then to calculate average acceleration, oops, let's make that bigger. Ah, okay. Average acceleration equals change in velocity over t. Do you remember that from last time? Another way to write that is final velocity minus initial velocity all over t. So we have all of these to plug in, and now you just plug in. So we have five kilometers per second minus zero kilometers per second, all divided by 10 seconds. So we have five kilometers per second divided by 10 seconds. And that gives us 0 0.5 kilometers per second squared because kilometers per second is being divided by another second. That's how we get kilometers divided by seconds squared, okay? And if you go back to this, we get 0 0.5 kilometers per second squared. Now remember, if you're given kilometers, you should give the same units in the answer, unless you're asked to convert the units into something else, but make sure you don't uh, read too quickly and then choose this as a wrong answer because it says 0 0.5 meters per second squared. It's actually 0 0.5 kilometers per second squared. Okay, next one. Talking about a space vehicle deploys its re-entry parachute when it's traveling at a vertical velocity of negative 150 meters per second. And it, it says here negative because the parachute is going down. It comes to rest at zero meters per second after 30 seconds. What's the average acceleration of the shuttle during this time span? So what do we do? It's asking for average acceleration again. So what do you think? Are we using the same equation? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. We're doing the same thing. This is all practice. And by the end of this practice, I think you will have this equation memorized by then. So now we have initial velocity of 
negative 150 meters per second. And then final velocity, it comes to rest at zero meters per second. And the time it takes is 30 seconds. So there we go. I wrote it all down. I'll stop sharing so you can see my stuff. Okay. So now plug in zero meters per second minus a negative 150 meters per second because uh, you have to pay attention to direction. Velocity is a vector that has a direction and magnitude. And then you divide all of that by 30 seconds. If you subtract a negative number, that becomes positive zero meters per second plus 150 meters per second. I'll divide by 30 seconds. It's 150 meters per second divided by 30 seconds. Oh. What do we get? Do you guys know? Five meters per second squared. So let's share the screen again. And you get the answer right there. Five meters per second squared. All right, next question three. Which statement is true about acceleration? It is the rate of change of velocity per unit time, okay? That is another way of saying the equation. Rate of change of velocity per unit time. A slightly fancier way to say acceleration equals change in velocity over time. Delta B over T. Yeah. A change in velocity means there is an acceleration. Okay. So that's the first three questions out of the way. Let's see. Number four. Next question, please. Okay. A bicycle traveled 150 meters west from point A to point B. So 150 meters west, let's draw that out. Point A. 150 meters. Point B. And I'll uh, unshare the screen so you can see that in a bit. Then it took the same route and came back to point A. It took a total of two minutes for the bicycle to return to point A. What is the average speed and average velocity of the bicycle? Okay, so total time. two minutes, which equals 120 seconds. And then we're looking for average speed and average velocity. I'll stop the uh, sharing for now. So average speed is actually the total distance traveled divided by total time. We get, so the first trip, he goes from point A to point B, 150 meters, and then he goes back 150 meters. 
in two minutes or 120 seconds. So the total distance is 300 meters, 150 plus 150, divided by 120 seconds. And if you plug that into a calculator, you get 2.5 meters per second. So an important thing to note, velocity is displacement divided by total time. Total time. Yeah, right, it's getting a little messy. Apologize. Um, but displacement is the shortest distance between the starting point and the ending point. Well, he started at A and he winds up back at A. So there is no change from his starting point and ending point. So that's actually zero over 120 seconds, but that doesn't matter because his average velocity is zero meters per second. And if you think about it, it, it makes sense. He spent some time going in this direction, which would be a negative direction, let's say, and then he switches direction, which would be a positive velocity. So if you see a change in direction, velocity will equal zero at one point. And therefore, in this equation, there's no displacement from a starting and ending point. So the velocity is zero. So we have 2.5 and zero, okay? Let's share that screen again. Cool. 2.5 and zero. Next question, number five. So in that last question, remember there's a difference between speed and velocity, okay? Speed, direction doesn't matter, velocity, direction does matter. But in this uh, question, we have a car. The velocity of a car traveling in a straight line increases from zero meters per second to 30 meters per second in eight seconds. What is the average acceleration of the car? Once again, average acceleration equals delta V over T a change in velocity over time. We have all the information. The initial velocity is zero meters per second. Final velocity, 30 meters per second. Time, eight seconds. So just plug and chug. There's our information. Now we just plug it in. Oh, there you go. Meters per second divided by eight seconds. That gives us 3.75 meters per second squared. Okay. And if we go back to the screen, we are correct. Okay, so hopefully you know how to use that equation and know what information means what and where to plug it in. Uh, let's 
take a look at calculating the average velocity in number six. Okay, similar equation, just different, different type of information needed. We have a car traveling south 200 kilometers from its starting point after two hours. So I think we should draw this out. Start. End. So average velocity equals, oh, I'll stop sharing now. There's our information. It starts here, travels 200 kilometers south over the course of two hours. So average velocity is the change from the change in distance from the start and ending point. So we have 200 kilometers all over two hours. And that comes out to 100 kilometers per hour. OK. Pretty easy if you know what you're doing. And this is velocity. So we have to remember to include the direction as well. So see, I'm a little too hasty. Got to include south. because velocity is a vector, you need the magnitude, how much, and then the direction as well, as well, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seven, we're almost done guys. John traveled on a motorbike a distance of 1,500 meters north. To get to the nearest shopping center, he then turned back south and rode another 1,450 meters to meet his friend. What was his displacement? Okay, so I drew it out here. So first he goes 1500 meters north and he turns around, goes 1450 meters south, leaving him 50 meters north of where he started. Start end. Okay, displacement is the distance between start and end. Okay, hopefully that one was easy for you. Number eight, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is about 56 meters tall. A ball released from the top takes 3.4 seconds to reach the ground. The final velocity of the ball before it hits the ground is 33 meters per second. 
assuming that the ball experienced a constant acceleration throughout this descent. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay. We have meters tall, 3.4 seconds. I shall stop sharing. We have the information. We are left with 33 meters per second divided by 3.4 given 9.7 meters per second squared. Okay. Same equation. Hopefully you know what to do. All right. A boat moves 60 kilometers east. From point A to point B. Then it reverses direction and travels another 45 kilometers toward point A. What are the total distances? What's the total distance and total displacement of the boat? Total distance. Total displacement. Okay. So, stop sharing. Total distance, it's the entire distance added up. Total distance traveled, 60 plus 45, 105 kilometers. Displacement is the difference between starting point and ending point. Start, end. So that would be 60 minus 45 because it reverses direction and travels back leaving only 15 kilometers left, okay? There's a difference between distance and displacement. 